Hey guys, Jim here. Time to get into another new acquisition and something that is very different from what I normally collect. And I've been trying to do that lately, kind of break myself out into different kinds of knives. And you guys have seen that in some recent videos. What we're looking at here is the uh, Koenig Knives Zeneda. Now, the reason why this is so different for me personally is I typically do not ever buy or carry a knife this small. What we're looking at here is a length of only 6.6 .6 inches overall, and uh, you're looking at a 2 and 3 quarter inch blade. This actually puts it as the smallest folder in my collection. Now, the next closest size for me is my Brad Southern Custom, my Tarsus. And that's still over a three inch blade. So this is as small as I've really enjoyed carrying over the past couple of years. Now you see that it is extraordinarily compact. What you can't tell is how insanely lightweight this thing is. It's almost like not carrying anything at all, especially because of the very thin blade stock and the small blade. But the trick to this is, and why this is different from everything else out there, is the construction. This is a wildly constructed knife. You have to realize that there are no screws in this knife. None. It's not held together by any traditional hardware. It is actually held together by dovetailing the frames together. So the two pieces swivel apart, and when you swivel them, you're able to open it up from the pivot. It is something that's very interesting, and a lot of people have become very curious about this after seeing uh, Koenig post this on their Instagram. So what we're looking at, let's get some specs out of the way. Uh, the pivot is 416 stainless steel. Uh, the stop pin is the same, hardened stainless steel. Uh, the thumb stud is titanium. The pocket clip is titanium that you see right back there. And you have phosphor bronze washers, which you can actually see when you peer through the open cut frame. One of the most interesting things about this, besides the dovetail construction, is the way they've done this open frame that you can see all the way into. And the very smooth sweeping lines that you have going throughout the entire knife. It's a really beautifully designed knife, something that even though it is really, really tiny, they've designed the handle with this kind of teardrop shape back here, where it actually kind of fills up the hand more than you would expect for a knife of this size. You know, something traditional in this size, especially with the height of the blade that you've got here, you know, could really just kind of cut back right here. You wouldn't even need all of this, but they gave you this extra bit here so you can really hold on to it in case you are going to do some serious cutting with this. Now, you're obviously, it's not a chopper or anything else, but it's not something that's going to slip around and twist around in your hand when you go to cut. The jimping is actually fantastic on the spine of the blade and actually makes this a pretty damn useful little knife. One of the little details that I really appreciate here is in the thumb stud. You'll notice that the thumb stud, uh, beautifully concaved, so the meat of your thumb actually drops into it. So if you want to do a slow opening, come on camera, you can very easily. I've always been more of a flicker, and it flicks, as you see, very, very well. It's a very snappy opening. And of course, it's very smooth being on the phosphor bronze washers. It, it's not quite subbenza smooth, but it's really, really, really close. And you get that sense and that feel when you're opening and closing it. Now, the, uh, the design feature behind this, actually pretty interesting. Um, <clears throat> the designer of this, his name is actually uh, TJ Schwartz, and he is a co-worker of Bill Koenig. And he's the one that actually came up with this design. And he says the inspiration behind this was to build a knife that doesn't require any screws or any traditional types of fasteners. It was intended to be unique simple, classy, and with an emphasis on the mechanical design while accentuating the aesthetics. Now, that's a whole bunch of words there, but you got to realize that what they set out to do, they did. You've got something that's unique. Uh, it's got a very pleasing flow to the overall design, but by doing something so out of the box <clears throat> and so different, 
it didn't take away from the functionality. So you've got a unique way of fastening the knife together. You have a unique shape and flow to the overall knife to give you a pleasing look, but it works in the hand. It's extremely sharp. They did a really, really nice job on sharpening this. And it does everything that you would expect a micro pocket knife to do. Very tight tolerances, very precise fitment on this knife. Now this is one of the prototypes. I think it was the first 15 knives that were made available were prototypes and that's one of these. And the regular production is going now. We'll get to the price in a little bit because I think that's going to be somewhat of a, a talking point for a lot of people because you're looking at you know, what is a relatively small knife and a knife that maybe uh, you wouldn't want to justify spending a lot of money on, but you have to realize the amount of work and all of the time to design that went into this. Let's talk about Koenig knives for a minute. Uh, they started in 2012 in Boise, Idaho. Um, they released their first model. It was called the Atrox. And that was an automatic. It was actually kind of a neat knife. I had seen that before. I had seen it on their Instagram. I'm not really huge into automatics. I have a couple. Uh, I will probably always have a couple in my collection, but it's not something I generally seek out. But when they posted the initial renderings of this knife, I thought to myself, I've never seen anything like it. Now, we didn't know what size it was at that time. And all I could think of was, holy shit, I need to get one of these in my hands. And... Uh, Bill and I had done a lot of chatting through uh, direct message on Instagram and he says yeah when I get the first ones done you know we'll definitely make sure you get one of the prototypes and I've been really anxious ever since that day they're really focusing on the mid-tech market and they're trying to create knives with each model that's going to be a little bit different than what everybody else is making so they're not going to come out with a mid-tech knife and really blatantly copy what anybody else is doing in their design or obviously in their in their concepts so I think they're gonna have a really good niche market for what they're doing I really hope that they make this knife larger like a three and a half inch blade I think then I think a lot more people are gonna be able to jump on it and enjoy it and experience what I've experienced with this uh, I don't really have any nitpicks with the knife except for the clip, and I've already talked to them about that, and they're going to be doing, a, I think, a different design later on. But the only nitpick that I have is the fact that when you're holding the knife, uh, the clip likes to move around on you. Now, it's not a really bad thing. It's just that you feel it. You will feel it kind of move up and down a little bit. It's not going to break off or anything like that. It's titanium. It's nice and strong, and it's in there well. And you guys know I really don't like a deep carry pocket clip. This is a little challenging sometimes to get out of the pocket because you have nowhere to really grab the knife except for thumb here and then finger here, which is applying more pressure to the clip. That's why I don't like deep carry clips. I like a little bit of a butt end sticking out so I have something for some part of my hand to grab onto. Overall, I think it's got a great balance. It's got a great flow and design. Uh, it's a fairly late lockup for some guys, but again, this is not a hard use knife and it's not a tactical knife, so it's not really that big of a deal. It really locks up very much like a, uh, like a Sebenza would. Now, the regular variations of this. This, I don't know if he's done any others like mine, but I know mine was unique by having the two-tone finish and then having the blue anodizing on here. Um, the way they're going to be coming is a blasted clip side, stone wash presentation side, and a stone wash blade. And their prices are starting at $400. Uh, a lot of people might think to themselves, whoa, holy shit, $400. Think of all the things I could get for $400. But if you really go out there and look, especially in the smaller knife segment, there's not a lot of individual creativity in that price range. And what I mean by that is, if you want something that's really out of the box, you're going to generally tend to be in a custom. Custom is going to run you over the, the amount of money that you're spending for this. I personally don't know of any mid-techs that are in this size. There may be, maybe I just haven't seen them, but most of the mid-tech manufacturing we've seen has been focusing on three and a quarter inch up to four inch. You know, that could vary from, you know, wh whoever it is and their different models, but I've never really seen one go down to under a three inch blade. 
So you've got something here that I feel is different. There's nothing else in the market like it right now. And I like having stuff like that in my collection. I like having stuff that generally other people don't have. Now, these are going to be in full production. There's going to be plenty of people that have these. But I got to tell you, for somebody that does not typically appreciate a smaller knife, I'm impressed. It, it is small. It feels small, but it doesn't feel as small as it really is. Again, because they've done this right back here to fill up a little more of the hand. If you take again a look against my Tarsus, you're almost getting the same amount of grip toward the rear of the frame that you get on the larger Tarsus. It does narrow a bit more here and obviously the blade is substantially smaller in every dimension, but you really have a sense of having something a little more substantial in your hand. It's hard for me to say that if I saw this in a store that I would immediately plop down $400 for it. Again, that is a premium amount of money uh, for a knife that's somewhat limited as far as, you know, it's not... How do I... I don't really know how to put it into words. It's a smaller knife. It's kind of a backup knife. It may be something you may never even clip in your pocket. You may just drop it straight into your pocket. For me to spend that much money, I have certain needs. It's got to be fairly tough. It's got to be able to handle some abuse if I need to put it under abuse. And it needs to be a backup for me as a self-defense weapon. So this would not fit the bill for me. What this is for me is a secondary carry knife. I would have my primary knife, then I would probably have this clipped into my back pocket. And it's a nice little backup for being a box opener, a letter opener, cutting twine, you know, just little small cutting tasks you may have through the day. He has a very, very fine edge on this. And it slices wonderfully. I took out some notebook paper earlier, just, I'm not notebook paper, but um, phone book paper uh, a little while before I did the video here, just to kind of get a feel for how keen the edge was. And they've done an excellent job bringing this to a nice, nice sharp edge. Stone wash is clean and even. A little bit of a uh, two-tone effect there on the, uh, the flats, just by a little bit more polish, I think. We get in here to the pivot again. There is your phosphor bronze washer. I really like the two-tone effect by going satin on the frame. Again, that's not how they're going to deliver, but you got to realize anybody can do that. That's going to be a very, very simple thing for somebody to do, even in their own kitchen. The construction still boggles my mind. It really does. This is a genius way of building a knife. I love seeing guys that are willing to take a chance, especially on a smaller company, you know, where they've only introduced one other knife previous to this. They don't have a really big name out there, and they want to set that, uh, that benchmark fairly high for themselves. Love the lock bar cut out here. Very slick, very cool. It's a little bit hard to see. There we go. And yeah, the clip is going to scratch the frame a little bit because it does move around. Again, they are addressing that issue. They're going to have a different clip design in the future, but that's the way it is for this one. Nice detent on this. We can hear it getting sucked in. I love the flow of the lines, the way the blade intersects that and drops in. You don't really feel the tip of the blade catching your finger there. Overall, you're going to buy this because it's different, because it's unique, because you've never seen anybody do something like this before. Now, it's funny that I'm actually comparing this to my Southern because Brad was working on something in a similar fashion. Not really the exact same way, but he had uh, put pictures up on Instagram probably about a month or two months before this started popping up where the spine of his frame basically had this, this dovetail design, but he was doing, uh, you know, welding on the inside and welding the titanium together and all kinds of stuff. It wasn't done for the same purpose this was, for the ease of disassembly and not needing tools or whatnot, but he wanted to do something that was interlocking that didn't use any uh, traditional hardware. So when you realize that these guys are thinking on that same level, it's pretty damn interesting. 
and I like the overall execution. For me, for it to be a total winner, just for my personal preferences, I'd want it to be bigger. I'd want a three and a half inch blade. They're running S35 VN steel at 58 to 60 Rockwell. That's great. For me, I'd want to probably, for this price range, go up to something a little bit more premium. S35 VN is great. I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking their choice. I'm just saying for personal preferences and for the amount of money, I'd like to see something like S90V, something that's going to be a little bit more wear resistant, a little bit longer lasting. And when you're going this thin, you want something that maybe is going to be less prone to microchipping. Um, and the pocket clip, that's really it. So if it was a little bit bigger um, and to justify the price point, it had a little bit more of a premium steel. And the pocket clip change, which we already know it's going to at some point in future runs, I think that overall, uh, this would be a win for me. For me personally, um, it's just a little bit too small for me to really throw in my pocket every day. But I know a lot of guys out there that do prefer to carry much smaller knives, whether it's because of the, la the laws in their state or just a personal preference. So if you like a smaller knife, if you're looking to spend around uh, three, four, five hundred dollars $500, I would give this a shot. I would definitely put this in your hand, get a feel for it. And I think you're going to be impressed with the way that this kind of just locks into your hand, doesn't wiggle around, doesn't get loose on you, and it doesn't feel like you're holding something cheap or something that's too tiny for your hand. I wear a size large glove, and you can see that obviously this is very small, but once I've got it open, it's just perfect. Well, as perfect as it can be for its diminutive size. So there you have it, guys. I just want to give you a quick overview on this. Uh, thank you to Bill for including me in the first 15. I very, very much appreciate that. And I hope that everybody that gets one is able to give some sort of feedback and let us know what you think of your knife. Because, again, it really is something that's that different in the industry that a lot of people are curious about it. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has done any kind of overview or review on these. So I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys on your knife. And uh, until then, I'll see you guys on the next video.